In this presentation, we can understand the importance of system internals by looking at the working of a Hello World application. So this is the agenda for this presentation. One of the main thing I would like to highlight here is this presentation is not about explaining or teaching things but to show you how complicated apparently simple looking things can be in a modern operating system like Windows. So if you are new to Windows operating system internals you are going to see a lot of commands in WinDebug which you are not familiar with also a couple of tools concepts and jargons but if you are interested you can keep on watching the presentation series so that you will get all those unexplained jargons now let me ask you this thing how confident you are about the working of a hello world application in any programming language Java, C Sharp, C++ as long as it runs on top of Windows. So I'm straight away going to the demo which is going to explore a Hello World application in Windows 8.1. Everything in this presentation is 8.1 or 8 specific. Windows 8.1 or Windows 8. So let me first explain you the setup I have, I have a Windows 8.1 virtual machine running on top of a VM player. Inside the Windows 8.1, I have Visual Studio 2010 running and I have a Hello World application inside that Visual Studio. So I have a kernel debugger running outside the virtual machine which is attached to this particular virtual machine through a pipe so that is the setup I have I'm going to run this application so I got the output which is hello world no surprise so this is process explorer it is running inside the virtual machine so inside the process explorer I can see my hello world.exe running so this is the hello world.exe here you can see a process called conhost.exe as per process explorer conhost.exe has started by hello world we have not written any code to make this window or we have not written any code to say that the background of this window is black and hello world is white. Another thing you see is this icon. What action should take for this three buttons you see here. So from where all this functionality coming from? Also if you right click you will get options like this. So basically that is the role of conhost. How do I know that? So for a simple experiment what I'm going to do is I'm going to observe this blinking. I have not written any code for this blinking as you can see in the screen right now. The cursor is blinking inside the console window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on conhost in process explorer and click suspend. Now if you look at the blinking is gone. Also if I right click nothing is coming out. No pop up window. Also as you can see the color of the window became gray and these buttons are not active anymore. I cannot click on these buttons. 
now I am going back and resuming it. Now the blinking came back and this buttons became active. Also I can move this window etc etc. Now how all this works? So who started this con host? Hello world has started the con host as per process explorer and process explorer is always right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a user mod win debug to further understand who is starting this con host who has written code for this con host because con host is showing the print of. I'm going to start a copy of win debug. Now I'm going to open the executable the hello world executable the main of the application is it to execute printf has not come but you can see this black window from that I should understand that con host is already started win debug is the parent of hello world and hello world has already started con host which means that con host is getting started way too early than even a user mode debug can attach to it. So to get into further details a user mode debugger is not going to help us. So remember all we are trying to understand is how hello world works. How this black window comes and hello world comes inside that. That is what our ultimate goal is. Currently all we know is Hello world.exe is starting con host and we have not written code for that. All we have is these three lines which doesn't include starting a con host and we are trying to understand that. We try to attach a user mod debugger but even before that con host is getting started. So here is where we gonna use the magic of a kernel mod debugger. So we gonna break into the very early stages of a process creation using a special breakpoint on a special function of kernel mod memory manager. So for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this go because this is not useful. So I'm closing this win debug which is running inside the VM and this is a win debug which is running outside the VM and attached to the VM. So I'm going to do a break here. So I'm going to put a breakpoint on a function called ndmm create process address space. So this is a function which creates an address space for a process my my goal is to break into the very early stages of a user mode process creation i'm giving this breakpoint and uh, letting the vm go we may get a couple of breakpoints which we may not need because this vm may create other processes as well so this is my hello world binary i'm going to double click on that so i got my first break so this break is for the process creation of hello world.exe. Now if I look at the thread which is creating this process, the command is bank thread. That is going to be explorer because explorer is the parent. This is not what I'm interested. So what I'm interested in the code path which creates con host from my hello world. So hello world is the exe which I have written code for. I'm going to do a go here g. So I got the second break on mm create process at the space which means that the next process is getting created and I'm expecting that process to be con host. Parent of that process is hello world.exe. So let's see that. Bang thread again.
So exactly that is what I was expecting. And this process is definitely going to be con host. Now let's see the code part. So this is the part where the loader comes. So loader is calling this particular function. So console launch server process. And that is sending an ioctl. It's calling a function called device IO control to the kernel mod driver called condiv. Condiv, as far as I know, it's a new component in Windows 8.1 and Windows 8. And condiv, it is creating the process. So this is the con host which is getting started. Once again, this is the loader of hello world dot exe. It is calling launch server process. It is sending a control command to the condrv.sys in kernel mod in the Windows kernel. And it is starting the con host process which is showing the black window. In the taskbar, you cannot see that black window. It is the explorer. Visual Studio and Process Explorer. Those are the three windows. Now, if I press a G, I can see that black window came and Hello World is printed. Now we have explained just how the black window get created. We are yet to explain how this Hello World is getting printed or how this particular string is getting transferred from hello world.exe to con host. For that what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this get ch to one line above. So my build succeeded. Now I'm going to double click on hello world. I got a break on mm create process address space. I am going to put G again G currently my black window got started I am waiting on this get ch now if I look at process explorer I can see that con is started by hello world going back to my kernel debugger Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint in this particular function from con DRV or the console driver in the context of hello world.exe. So slash p then the process pointer. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to intercept all the controls or commands which is going into the con DRV from this particular process which is hello world. Now hello world is waiting on get ch. Now if I press and enter I am expecting it to break into the debugger. So I got a break. To load the symbols correctly, I'm executing another command called dot process slash r slash p, then the process pointer to get the stack correct. So this is part of the get ch return, although the break is on this particular function. Pressing another G. So now, as you can see, this is print off. So this is Hello World, which is trying to print. 
and it is passing all the way down here to the CDP fast IO device control. I'm going to look at the I'm going to look at the threads inside conhost.exe. So there are other conhost processes as well. Some other console applications running inside that computer. So this is the one I am interested in. There are two threads, one is this and another is this in conhost.exe. So this is the thread which is showing the UI that is waiting on a function called get message. And it is ultimately waiting on the GDI or Windows graphics subsystem, win32k.sys. And the other thread is waiting on an IO or console IO on an IRP completion. So there is a pending IRP in the kernel mod. So let's see who is owning this IRP. The command is bang IRP. So as you can see, IRP is pending on con DRV. Printf is going to complete this IRP. And that is how this process is going to get that string from the kernel. So the communication is like hello world con DRV then con host. And con host back to hello world through con DRV. In short these are a couple of the steps we have seen. We have executed the hello world. We observe the presence of con host in process explorer. We found out that the black window is by conhost. The conhost is started by hello world and it was started very early. We cannot catch it through a user mod debugger. So we used a kernel mod debugger and put a breakpoint on this particular function. We started hello world again. We saw the presence of con DRV and then we put a breakpoint on this particular function in the context of this process, hello world process and we saw printf and get ch calls on the call stack. And in the end we looked inside conhost and we saw that an IO pending in con DRV and that IO will complete when the printf comes. So that is what so far we have seen. Now let's see what is left. So if you are new to all these things, I am sure you would have already lost. But unfortunately, things have just started from a printf working standpoint. There are a lot more things to go and let us see what is left. Now the story is about conhost. I am not going to show it through the debugger. Hopefully we will have a detailed session on WDDM in Windows or the graphics subsystem in Windows. In that I will be using the debugger and showing all these calls to you. The question is what conhost does on getting command from condiavi to show it on your monitor what con host does. Con host call into gda32.dll. There are different functions like draw text, text out. They are all graphics subsystem Win32 APIs. And 
a GTI 32 calls into Win32 Cadotsys in kernel mod. Then a Win32 Cadotsys want to draw this in the graphics memory. For that, it takes help from the DirectX subsystem in the kernel. DirectX subsystem contacts the display mini pot which is the driver for your display adapter which is connected to your monitor. So Win32k.sys determines along with the DirectX subsystem decides what are the pixels to be changed to show that print off on the screen. Once that decision is made, it will contact display mini pod and then your graphics card. Your graphics adapter or the graphics card will drive the monitor and show that pixel on the screen. There are tons of things I shortened in this particular diagram. So I do understand that some of these things make sense to you and some of these things doesn't make sense. The question is, do you really want to care about these details? Answer is yes and sometimes no. You have to understand the system to program the system. Every programming language, all it does is programming the system. One way or the other, you are trying to control the system in different ways. This is a very good example why you should understand the operating system internals irrespective of how good you are in a programming language or using it again it is your choice whether you want to learn the internals or live in a virtual world of abstraction of course you can get away with abstractions without knowing the internals but you can do more things effectively if you know the internals and to know the reality by understanding what is lying behind the abstraction. So what is the advantage of understanding the internals? A programming language independent knowledge of a modern operating system. A greater insight and a better leverage towards using, administrating, testing, troubleshooting, programming, architecting and last and not least protecting the operating system you're working with. Understanding internals is utmost important when it comes to security. Once you learn the internals, you hardly worry about a new programming language or an unknown programming language as long as it runs on top of a operating system you know about. A new operating system release, say for example Windows 9. A new unknown software running on top of it. You want to learn and study that software. You will have a better insight once you know the working of the operating system. Also you will start better appreciating new technologies like a .NET or Java or Hadoop and how can these technologies help power all the technologies in some cases. So this presentation was all about explaining you the importance of couple of the upcoming series of operating system internals. So it's going to be about principles of a modern operating system mostly based on Windows and some of the programming interfaces, algorithms and data structures inside the operating system. So coming to the summary, we have seen the importance of learning internals of a modern operating system. We have seen a demo to understand how complicated a simple hello world application can be. Also we discussed about the choice to make to be in the world of abstraction of reality or to be in the world of actual reality. Also we have seen what are the advantages or gains for doing all the hard work for learning the internals.
That's about the presentation. Now, reviews, comments, and suggestions I would like to take from one single location. So if you don't mind, I would like to follow this particular pattern for the reviews and comments. Unfortunately, it is not really useful to me if you update the YouTube comments as YouTube is just one way we publish content. Now, if you think you need more personal attention or have some in-depth doubt or need some more training, please feel free to follow these links. Also, please refer someone if you think they can benefit from similar trainings. All services are available online as well as direct classroom training. So that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.